let's talk for a few minutes here about how to make buffers and uh, what buffers are and how to do calculations. So the first thing we really want to get in this little tutorial is what exactly does a buffer do and then why does a buffer work in the first place? Uh, how can you make a buffer? And a couple of little things about buffer calculations. So we want to talk about the most effective buffer you could make. What would the pH of that be? And if you don't want it to be exactly the pH it comes out, you want it just a little bit, uh, what can we do about that? A buffer is a solution that changes its pH very, very little when you add uh, acid or a base, small amounts of acid or a base. Now we could make one out of acetic acid and acetate ion, and we'll talk about that more. But if we had a buffer and we um, added some base to it, the pH would go up, but it would go up and up and up, and then it would kind of stop changing, you know, barely changing, and then it would go up very suddenly. If we did this with plain old water, we would start out with a pH of 7, and then as we added the base, the pH would just go up and up and up really easily. Uh, but a buffer has a place where it kind of stops changing its pH. Now, why does a buffer work? If we have a plain old acid equilibrium, so here we're saying HA is our generic acid. Uh, A stands for the anion. Could be acetate, could be fluoride, could be cyanide. And this is a weak acid. And that breaks up a little bit to give you H plus and A minus. And the A minus would be the acetate ion or the cyanide ion or the fluoride ion. Um, this is the same equilibrium we would do for any acid. The difference here is in a buffer, we were going to have a large amount of our acid and we're also going to have a large amount of our conjugate base. Now, this makes a difference. If I were to go through and let's say do Le Chatelier's and we say let's add some H+, plus, then we know what's going to happen is there's too much H+, plus and it's going to shift to the left. But what does that mean? It means that the H pluses are going to react with the A minus because that is a good acceptor. So basically the H pluses that we add to the uh, equilibrium will be mopped up by the A minuses and turn into HA. Now in the same way, if we were to add some base to this, little OH, then we would say there's not enough H plus, it would shift to the right. And the reason it would shift to the right is we have a lot of the A minus, and what that is a donor. So a nice buffer is a solution that has a lot of donor and acceptor. And when we have the donor and acceptor, it can take care of any small amount of H plus that is added or removed. So if we add some, the A minus can uh, mop it up, can accept it. And if we remove some H plus, then the acid can donate it. Now, how do we go about making a nice buffer. Well, a buffer, all we have to have, we say we have to have our acid, we have to have a conjugate base. So we have to have a donor and an acceptor, an acid and a base, but they have to exist in solution together. If we threw in something like HCl and NaOH, they would neutralize each other and all we would have is salt water. But if we have a weak acid and a weak base that will not react with each other, the best way to do it is a conjugate base of the acid. And we can also make this by taking a weak base, like ammonia, and react it with it, have a, combine it with its con, uh, conjugate acid, like NH4+, and that would make a nice buffer as well. Now, one way to do this, if I had, let's say, some uh, hydrofluoric acid, maybe a 0.2 molar, and I add, you know, make a solution, add to it some sodium fluoride, 0.2 molar, that would be a great buffer because here I have my acid and I've got my conjugate base and the sodium ion is just a spectator ion. It would just be in solution. If I were to do something like cyanide, I could do hydrogen cyan, hydrocyanic acid and I could have a sodium cyanide. And if I made a solution with amounts of those two, that would be a nice buffer. A really common one would be acetic acid. 
and let's say we use potassium acetate. So again, the acetate ion is the conjugate base of my weak acid, acetic acid, and that would be a great buffer. Now, another way to do this, and a very clever way, is to go ahead and take some acid and neutralize it with a base. Because what happens is the H and the OH turn into water, and then we are left with the conjugate base of our weak acid. So here we have the acid, and the result would be the conjugate base. So if we do this correctly, we can make a nice buffer. We can get our acid, we can get our conjugate. The way we would do this is say we had a 0.2 molar HF and if we were to react that with some nice sodium hydroxide but we need to be careful let's say we use an equal volume of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide then when we were all done we would have 0.1 molar HF because half of it has reacted and we would have 0.1 molar NaF our conjugate in the same solution so if we neutralize half of our acid then we can turn the acid into the conjugate base and we end up with a buffer so two ways to make a buffer one is to start off with a weak acid and add to that same solution the conjugate. So maybe HCN, and then we could add NACN. That would work. We could have uh, HC2H3O2 and add sodium C2H3O2. The other way to do that would be to take some of our acid and to neutralize half of it so we make our conjugate base from our acid. Now, what would be the pH of the solution that we made? Let's say we were talking about acetic acid, and we know that acetic acid has a Ka of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, and if we wanted to try different acids, we would go back and look up what their Ka's are. But let's just say this acid has a Ka of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Well, the very, very nicest buffer we can make is one that has large equal amounts of our acid and base. So we have a donor that can go and give back any H pluses we remove, and we have an acceptor that can remove any excess H pluses that we add. So this buffer will be ready to go both directions. If we have large equal amounts of those two, so my HA concentration happens to equal my A minus concentration, then when we get to our equation we can see that these two are going to cancel and now my Ka equals my H plus concentration and that equals 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 for this particular acid which we say is acetic acid now if we take the negative log of everything we can find out that our pH is equal to the negative log of 1.8, that is 4.74, and that is called the pKa. Now, when we have pH, there's nothing really special about the pH. You know, the pH is just the negative log of that H plus concentration, so we could just as easily take the negative log of the Ka and get what we call the pKa. In this case, it's 4.74. And that is very important because that is the pH of the best buffer that we could make from this acid. If we wanted to make other ones, so here's the one we just did. So the negative log of the Ka in this case is 4.74, but you could see if we did chlorous acid, the negative log of that would be 1 point something. And the negative log of the one with hydrocyanic acid would be nine point something. So if we wanted to make different kinds of pHs for the buffer, then we could do that just by choosing different amounts, different uh, acids and its conjugate base. So for acetic acid, we use acetic acid and we'd use acetate, maybe sodium acetate, maybe potassium acetate. Here we could use chlorous acid 
and maybe sodium uh, chloride. And if we wanted to try hydrocyanic acid, we use HCN, maybe potassium cyanide, something like that. Or for any of these, we could also take our acid and neutralize half of it because that would turn it into its conjugate. Now you can go and buy uh, different buffer solutions. There are times where you want to have a buffer of a pH of 4. You might want to have a buffer of pH of 7. Um, maybe for electrolysis, you want to, uh, I mean, for using your pH meter, you want to store it in a certain pH, or you want to use it to calibrate your, your buffers, your, um, your probes. And what happens is you can buy those, and they would make those from different acids. Now, we saw if we used uh, acetic acid, we would get a nice buffer if we had equal amounts of uh, the acid in the conjugate base, and we found out that the pH for this buffer would be 4.74. Then the question comes up, well, what if I don't want exactly 4.74? What if I really wanted it to be 5, pH of 5? Well, we could do that. Now, you could look at, do I think I need more of my base or more of my acid? And you would think, well, this is a little bit closer to 7, a little more neutral. So I would probably need more of my base, more of the A minus. So if I can adjust that ratio from 1 to 1 to something else, I could get a slightly different pH. So before we do this, we'll say, well, if I want pH of 5.00, that means my H plus concentration will be 1 times 10 to the negative 5. And I'm not worried about significant figures right this moment. So here I have my equation. And I'm saying, well, I know my H plus concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 5. And I have my concentration of A minus. I'm going to keep the concentration of HA. And I know that this equals 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. So you can see what I'm going to do is to take both of these, divide them both by 1 times 10 to the negative 5. The 10 to the negative 5's cancel. This completely cancels. And I can see that my, con my ratio of my concentrations will be 1.8 to 1. So we are saying if I wanted a solution that had a pH of 5, all I would have to do is adjust my concentration of acetate and concentration of acetic acid so that they are in a 1.8 to 1 ratio, and that would change my buffer to a pH of 5. Now, this also means if I had a buffer that had a pH of 5, and let's say that I diluted this, and I say I doubled the volume, that would change both concentrations, but it would not change my ratio. So therefore, the pH, if I take a buffer and dilute it, it still stays with a pH of 5. I can go back if I wanted to make a pH of, say, 6 or 7. I wouldn't just keep adjusting my uh, ratio, what I would do is find a better system that would be closer to what I want, and then I could adjust it a little bit if I need to from there. So that's the basic things that we do with pHs and buffers.